So welcome back. We're going to tackle sections two and three of article two, and this is all about the actual jobs of the president. So it's a laundry list of what the Constitution designates as the responsibility of the acting president. Okay, so first job. The president is commander in chief of all of the armed forces, including Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, National and Coast Guard. Now, the reason for this is that the founding fathers wanted to ensure that in the case of an emergency, our country had someone in a position of power who could act quickly. Think, for example, after September 11th, instead of having to go to Congress to get approval, then President George W. Bush very promptly responded by sending troops into Afghanistan to find Osama bin Laden um, and other Al Qaeda operatives. Okay, so that's job number one. Number two, the president can pardon or suspend punishments for all offenses in the United States, except impeachment, interestingly enough. Uh, so this is one of the superpowers of the office of the president, including commander in chief. Um, what it literally means is a get out of jail free card for anybody. Uh, this could be somebody convict convicted in a criminal court or a civil court. Um, or it could be somebody serving a sentence and it could like shorten their sentence, um, meaning commute their sentences. Um, but uh, the way that I often remember what a pardon is, is actually by thinking about Thanksgiving. Every year prior to Thanksgiving, the president pardons a turkey. So think about it. What does that mean? It means that the president literally saves the life of a turkey um, and then offers it a spot at the White House to live on the lawn of the White House, although I think they've been sent somewhere else now, uh, to live out the rest of its life in peace. Uh, so again, yes, they literally and symbolically pardon a turkey, but they also have this extraordinary power to pardon any punishments, uh, pardon any convicted felons or et cetera from their crimes. Okay, next, number two. The president can make treaties and appointments. There's sort of a twofer here, okay? We have commander-in-chief, pardon, treaties, and appointments. Treaties are agreements with foreign countries, right? Um, so the president makes the treaties because they are seen as the chief diplomat of our country. However, they require a two-thirds Senate approval. Again, checks and balances. Number two, appointments. The president shall nominate ambassadors, Supreme Court justices, and members of the presidential cabinet, think like the line of succession, that whole line of people, and other federal officials. So yes, they have the power to make the treaties and to make the appointments, but these nominations must also require Senate approval for final appointment. Again, checks and balances. And then the last power of the president is something called the State of the Union Address. Every year, the president must give an update, a speech for the country to understand what is happening. And this happens in the House of Representatives chamber of the Capitol building. It has almost the entire acting government there, including the entirety of Congress, the entirety of the executive branch, and the judicial branch, the Supreme Court. Now, there is always one person not at the State of the Union address, which is called the Designated Survivor, which if you've ever heard of that TV show before, uh, that's what it's based on. Okay, so those are the duties of the president. There's one more that is sort of unofficially given to the office of the president, um, and it's in Article 2, which is why we're going to talk about it now. It says, he shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed or carried out and shall commission all the officers of the United States. And from that, over the years... Presidents and uh, the Supreme Court has interpreted that as something called an executive order. Okay, so we're going to learn a lot more about this and look at examples, but the president has, quote, broad enforcement authority to execute laws as long as he or she does not go against the laws passed by Congress. This is called an executive order. Now, executive orders are different than laws. They are typically temporary and fast-acting, um, and uh, they often expire at the end of a presidency or are quickly, if the president coming afterwards uh, is a different political party, they are often just almost immediately thrown out. I've linked a list of current executive orders. Uh, currently, Biden has been setting records for his term in office. He has used his executive or privilege, order privilege more than any other president, and previously it was Trump, and then before that um, it was then President Obama. So this power has been used a lot. Okay, especially lately. Um, I'm not going to put this on here right now, but there is a video linked on your slide as well. We're going to watch it together as a class, and we're going to look at examples of executive orders in history 
we're going to try to explore if we believe this is constitutional or not. In other words, if this phrase gives this power to presidents, why or why not? Okay, so that's the end of sections two and three.